In this case study, we're going to recreate this floor system families, which allows us to have multiple structural elements. In this case, it is a wooden floor system with joists, wooden joists. You can see we can drag the blue grips and the dimensions automatically adjust and creates as many joist elements as you need based on the dimensions. Let's go to the file tab and create a new family. Although this is structural framing, we'll start with the generic model family template. Very quickly, let me create a few reference planes, uh, a couple like this for the length of the element and two others. Currently, the origin is set at the center. I will unpin this and set the is reference to the right side and make the right side as the origin. It will make it a bit simpler later on. Uh, right now, we're using the imperial units. Let me quickly switch this to use metric instead. I'm going over here and selecting millimeters, clicking OK. All good. I will click on EQ for this to make sure this reference plane is always at the center. This should be the left side reference plane. And I will create a new length parameter. I will click here to create a new label and I will use shared parameters because I want this to be included in schedule. I already have a shared parameter file and me select a length for this. And this will be instance based parameter. Now let me create another dimensions over here. I will click on EQ once again then another dimension, uh, assign a label. This will be a shared parameter. I select thickness. This is instance based. And typically I'll set it to 38 millimeters sounds about right. So I have the, the thickness, I have the length. Let's go to the front elevation. Let me place a new reference plane on top, create a dimension, click on this icon create a new shared parameter, and this is structural depth. All right, let's put it at uh, 300, about one foot. Uh, let's check this box that says shared family. This is going to be useful later on. Now I'm ready to create the geometry. I will go to the Create tab, select the Extrusion tool, draw my extrusion just like this click on the lock icons and I want to have a material parameter. So this is going, I can leave it type based and simply call it material. Okay, sounds about right for now. Let's go to the front elevation and drag the grips to make sure it matched the structural depth. I will also uh, drag the grips to the reference planes and click on the lock. Everything seems to be set. I can very quickly test the dimensions to make sure everything is fine. If I just change this, this, and this value, is everything following? It seems to be the case indeed. Uh, it just seems that structural depth, I see, I don't see the text default, so we'll just modify the parameter and make sure it is instance-based. Good for now. So this family is ready. Let me save it. Okay. Uh, a final thing that I forgot to do is to switch the family category. I go to the Create tab, click on the yellow folder, and switch from Generic Model instead using Structural Framing. Okay, all good. I can save again. Let me create a new family. Once again, this is going to be a generic model family, and this is going to be for the entire floor system. Generic model. So the first thing I'll do is to set the bones and the muscle. First, I'll do the perimeter of the floor system, like this. I can create the EQ dimensions. And once again, you saw that this is using the metric units. And I want imperial, so I'm switching to millimeters instead. I will draw dimensions like this on the two directions. This is going to be the depth. And this is going to be 
uh, the length. They should be instance parameter. Did I put it for the depth? I don't remember. Let's go to the family type menu. No, I will switch, click on the pencil icon and switch to instance. All good. And then I want to add a thickness parameter just right here. It will make it easier to place some of the reference planes. Okay, I can select all of these parameters, click here to create a new parameter, and this is called uh, thickness. It can be instance as well. And let me change the dimension to have 38 millimeters. Let's go to the front elevation and set the structural depth value. Select this dimension, click here and call it structural depth. This is an instance based parameter and I can set it at 300 millimeters. And then finally, um, okay, I'll wait a little bit until I've started creating the geometry. You know, I like to set the bones and the muscles first, but let's bring in the geometry now. So I'm loading this piece of wood into the new family that is still named family four at the moment. So let me click once and I need to assign the length parameter because if you try to do something like this and where you look on this side and look on this side and you change the length, like right now it's working, but it's possible that you have some mistakes. A much better way of doing it is setting uh, this value right here, assigning a value for the length. So I will assign a value for the length. I will assign the value for the structural depth and one for the thickness. And then I can align and lock this element just like this. I will align and lock in the elevation view as well. Let's go back to the floor plan view. I can copy this element down below align and lock over here, over here as well on this side. Okay, that seems good enough. And now I need an element that goes here, but you can see it's not the full depth parameter. So let's say that I have uh, this value. Uh, I will need a formula, a new parameter with a formula, and I will call it uh, joist depth. This is an instance based parameter and the formula is going to be depth minus 2 multiplied by thickness. So I get the correct value. And now if I copy and paste this element, rotate it, I can press spacebar to rotate and switch the length from this value to use joist depth instead. The other parameters are fine. I can align and lock over here and align and lock just like this. Copy and paste the element over there. As you see, I like to paste the elements further away from where I want them to be just to make sure that I can properly align and lock. So this seems to be about right. And I can check to make sure all the, all the dimensions are associated. So I have my my base structure for the perimeter. Let's try to change a few dimensions to make sure everything properly works. If I move to 4000, this is fine. If I adjust the thickness, it also works. The structural depth, let's change it a little bit. Also working, so everything seems fine for now. I like it. Let's go back to the floor plan view and now I need to create uh, the joists following a certain span and the span is going to be calculated from the middle of this element. So let me add another reference plane. I will add this EQ dimension, create another reference plane over here and another one right there. And I can add dimensions like this. First one center, another one right here. I can select both these dimensions at once, click here, and this is going to be called Joyce Span. Is it a type? Is it an instance? I'm not sure. Let's leave it a type for now. Okay. And this should be, typically I would say 16 inches. Is this pretty much a standard? That's 406 millimeters. Let's just round to 400. 
all good. So I can copy and paste this element. The dimensions are good. Uh, first, I will align. Do I have a reference plane? Where is it? Okay, there's my reference planes. I align over here. Then I can align on this one, align and lock. And I'm ready to create an array. I use the AR shortcut or click here. Make sure to move to uh, the second element, not the last. So again, I don't place it immediately at where I want it to be. I just place it a bit further away. So I can align and lock to the center and align and lock over here as well. Select one of the element, this should appear. This is the amount of element, I can switch it, but I want to create a formula. So I select it on label, I click on add parameter. This is called number of array. This should be an instance type of parameter. And now I just need to figure out the formula. And the formula for this, first we should put around down because we don't want one element to go further beyond uh, the length of this family. So it's gonna be a round down. And the formula should be uh, the length minus two times the thickness. Let me put more parentheses, another one over here and over here. And this should be divided by the joist span. Let's try it this way. Does it work? It says that there are nine elements. I can click on apply to test it out. Seems pretty good, right? If I change the length a little bit, again, you can see it works. All right, so the family is almost ready. Something else that I want to do is to place reference line. I will place one over here, one over here. Oh, let's uh, move it. One here and one here. And then I will create dimensions that go from the reference plane to the reference line. Like this, like this, like this, and like this. So these two should be the length, and these two should be the depth. And I will save this family. Okay, my family is uh, ready. I can select it and play with the dimensions. You can see I move the length like this. I can change the depth. I can adjust the structural depth. I can change the thickness of the elements. And right now, if I can also tab select each individual element, I cannot change the instance parameters directly because they are controlled by the main family, but I can go to edit type. And let's say that I want a wood material, for example, for all of this, I can select the pine. And let's see what happens. You can need a color change. Uh, something else that I really like is the fact that these are shared families. I can create a schedule. So let's go, say that I go to the view tab. I go to schedule. And these are structural framing elements. And since I've used shared parameters, you can see there are two length. I'm not sure which one is the correct one, so I will place both. I will add structural depth and I will add uh, the depth shouldn't be in there or the thickness, in fact. So I can see all the elements uh, right here. So if let's say that I, I play with this, you can see that the dimension change. So I know the second length is not correct, so I can simply remove it. So as you can see, the dimensions of the element is automatically updated. And if I change the structural depth over here, this is going to be reflected there. So this family strategy for structure is very interesting if you want to have precise scheduling and you don't want to individually place each element. And although here we have a very simple floor system, it can be used for roofs where you can integrate structural families with a slope, for example. You could use a more complex uh, wood rafter families. You can even include columns and uh, much more. So that's it for this case study. Thank you so much and see you later.
If you've enjoyed this video, check out the Herrick Families course for Revit. It includes hundreds of tips to help you become a powerful developer of Revit families your teammates will love using. Enroll now at beampure.com.